Good afternoon to my fellow engineers. Today we're going to be looking at um, the thin wall and the web network and um, we're also going to shove some uh, ribs in there as well so that we um, we can create some more intricate and detailed parts. Um, so what we're going to be making today is we're going to be making a wine rack. Um, so just uh, you know, like a box with uh, eight segments in it that you can put your bottles of wine in um, or bottles of Lucasade or whatever you want to shove in there. And no, that's not product placement. Um, so uh, we're all going to be making this in the part environment. So we're going to be making a part. We're, um, we're probably going to make something that we can stick together later on using the assembly, and we'll make the assembly in the um, in the next video. Um, and we'll just, uh, uh, just go ahead and then make our um, our wine rack for this part for the, uh, for the for today. So I'm going to start by opening up our parts. Okay, so. As I said, in this video, we're going to be looking at the thin wall, um, the ribs, and the web network functions. So just to point out where they are, the thin, they're all in this area here. There's the thin wall, which is that button there, or this wall here. Um, there's a web network that we're going to be making, and then there's a rib. Um, and you'll see what all of those are as the, the video progresses. For a thin wall um, to exist, we need a, uh, a box to make thin. So if you imagine like a bucket, um, First of all, fill that bucket in with whatever plastic it was made of. Okay, that's your um, your starting piece, like your extrusion. And then you cut away parts of the internal of the, of the bucket and you make that thin wall. And the same thing can be achieved by doing an extrusion and then a cut um, inside. But this time, just so that we can get used to it, we're going to make this thin wall and it can make more intricate uh, shapes in future. So as I said, we need a, a basis to start on. So we're going to use the extrusion command. Um, and as I said, we're just going to use um, a very simple design for this uh, wine cooler. So we're just going to use a square. And it's just going to be a 4x4, four four, uh, um, sorry, a 2x2 two two wine cooler. So we're going to make a, um, uh, so a bottle of wine is uh, 10 centimeters wide. So we need two of those and a little bit of extra room. So we'll make this 240 by 240 as our square. Okay, and um, we're going to extrude this upwards by, let's just say, uh, 100, so 10 centimeters. That should be uh, should be sufficient. So this is just our simple 240 by 240 um, square. If I'll shove some dimensions on there as well to make it a little bit easier to see. Okay, and that's just our general shape. So now we need to make this thin wall, and we want this thin wall to be. Um, it's going to be. Uh, basically like a, a scale down offset of this square that goes inwards a little bit and the way that we can achieve that as I said we can do a cut and then just don't bring it all the way through but instead we're gonna click on the thin wall button okay and the first thing you have to say is right what do you want your thickness to be of this wall and we want this to be um, quite a thin light bucket so we're gonna say uh, five mil thickness so you set your thickness and then press enter and then you select the plane that you want to make uh, that you want the thin wall to exist in so I'll show you what I mean first of all just by I click on the top plane press OK and press preview so what this has done is it's saying right from this top plane we're gonna have a 5 mil thickness there and it's gone down in this case 95 millimeters so that the bottom case is 5 millimeters thick as well Okay, so that's what we've created. We've effectively put a 230 by 230 by 95 um, cutout into the center of this, and it's a lot easier than doing the cutout using the cutout command. So we're just going to save that. Okay, so that's very simply how we can make our thin wall network. Okay, next we're going to be making um, our, uh, our um, web network, and what we want for that is we want, uh, because this is obviously supposed to be for four wine bottles but we want to segment the wine bottles off so that they don't um, rattle against each other and so that you know they don't slide around too much so we're going to make uh, a five millimeter thick wall along the center and then a five millimeter thick wall along this line here so we're going to have one on the x plane and one on the, the y plane and they're all going to go from the top of uh, this you know from the outside down to the bottom uh, in the z plane so to set that we need to set um, we need to go onto the web network tool, which is just 
uh, if you see the thin wall and then you just slide down to web network there. Um, we need to select what plane we're going to uh, start the top of the web network down. So um, if we change this to coincident plane and we say we want it from the top of this plane, this this the top of the, if you can see that the top of this plane here, and we want it to go all the way down. So we're going to select this uh, top plane here. And then we go into our sketch as normal, like in extrusion or in cutting. It's very similar. You know, they, they all work in the same way. I'm hoping so you're starting to realize that now. And as I said, we want um, a cut along, uh, we want the web network to go along here and along here. And the way that we achieve that is we say, right, where, where do we want the center of the line to be? Where do we want the center of that wall to be? And as I said, we want it to be five millimeters thick, so we want two and a half millimeters on either side. Um, and we want the center to be from the midpoint of there to the midpoint of there, and the midpoint of there to the midpoint of there. So that way it's going to be two and a half mil thick on either side. And that's how you make your web network. So we'll just go ahead and draw in those lines. Um, literally as I have just, just said them. Like so. Okay, so you should have this sort of layout now, so it just looks like a, like a, a cross. And as I said, we're going to thicken these lines by 2.5mm on either side, um, and it's going to be dragged down. So we can close this sketch. Okay. We want the thickness to be 5mm. And we can either say, right, we want this network to go up, which will be, you know, we're not we're not doing that. That's not gonna. That would make the net, web network start there and work upwards. And I'm not sure it will it, it even work. Um, or we could have it go down, which is what we wanted to do. So it'll start on this plane and it will go all the way down until it hits something, which will be the bottom of this. So if we press down, and then we've made that net, that web network. This is really easy to do. It's much easier than doing the cut command or the extrude command because it does all four of them for you, nice and easy, and it's all the same thickness. So. Now we can. I'm just going to shove in some dimensions so that you guys can uh, can see this a little bit clearer, so that you guys know what the dimensions should be. So there you go. We've got square section. We've got squ uh, four squares within a big square, and this is to, uh, this is for our um, our wine cooler, our wine sort of holder. Okay. Um, I'm just going to uh, make it look more, uh, I suppose, hospitable um, for a wine bottle, um, and obviously wine bottles aren't. Uh, square there, um, circular, so we're just going to round these edges a little bit to give it a little bit of a, a snugger fit. So we're just going to go onto the round command, set our uh, radius to, we'll say 30 millimeters today, feeling frisky, and then we just, uh, we can just select the lines that we want to round. I'm sure you've, you've, you've seen this before in a previous video. Now we could go ahead and do all four, and there's only four of them, so it wouldn't take too long. But if in future you made a you know a 100 by 100 uh, egg egg box container or something like that, it would take forever to do that. So what we're going to do, we're just going to set one of them for now. Okay. okay. So that looks all right, but obviously we want this uh, round to be on all for, uh, all four. So the way that we can achieve that, I don't know if you recall the mirror command. We did the mirror command when we were making the uh, table assembly. We could easily use the mirror command in this case because um, we could just mirror on on the ZX, ZY plane and then we uh, mirror on the ZX plane. But instead, that obviously as I said, that won't work if you've got a 100 by 100 box. Um, at the minute we've only got a 2 by 2 so it's, it would work perfectly well. But it wouldn't work if you had a much larger box. So what we need to do is we need to set some parameters. We need to set up kind of like a pattern and say, right, this uh, feature when this feature occurs in this shape, I want it to occur starting from these certain points. So if we say that these rounds occur from the imaginary point of the um, of you know these lines going up to here, uh, when that happens, I want it to happen as well. So it'll happen here, here, and it'll happen here as well. So to do that, so to do that, um, this uh, this pattern, I think uh, you guys might know where I'm going with this. You have to select the pattern command. And again, it works very similarly to um, all of the other commands. The first thing you do is you set a plane. Uh, sorry, the, the first thing you do is set, is set what you want to, to to be a pattern, you know, what feature you want. So we're going to select the round. 
then you have to select your plane so um, it can either be this plane or it could be this plane I don't mind so I'm just going to choose uh, this top plane today and now you need to select your um, uh, your pattern now the way it works you can either have a circular pattern so if you were making a circular container um, you could have it so that every 20 degrees it does one thing or you could have a square um, set up or a rectangular set up so after every 20 millimeters this way and 40 millimeters this way it does this thing and obviously when you look at this the way that we want it to work is well arguably we could use this the circular one we could say right we want the, the middle point and we want it there and then every 90 degrees we want to go around we want to do that and that would work perfectly well but for simplicity again if we're using a 100 by 100 box or, or something more more um, complex than that even we have to do it by square you couldn't do that so it's kind of like the um, Cartesian versus polar coordinate system sort of sort of idea so for that you can either choose a circular pattern this is in features just so I draw you can either choose a circular pattern or you can choose a rectangular pattern so as I said we're going to choose a rectangular pattern here and I don't know if you remember me saying that but we, we want um, uh, this imaginary point which is uh, on the edge here we say when that occurs do this thing so we're going to start our rectangular pattern by clicking on that now if we just did a straight line from there to this point which obviously does exist because it doesn't have the round it would only do it once and if we did it this way it would only do it once this way but we want it to happen there 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 and there so we're going to set it from the top of this uh, from, from this top point up here all the way down to the top point of this lower square here okay so that's that's defining what the um the edges of our system is going to be like and obviously solid edge wants to know how many times we want to repeat it um we obviously know that you know when you look at that we obviously know that we want it to be repeated twice on this axis and twice on this axis but solid edge doesn't know that you need to tell it that and you tell it that on this command bar so it's saying right I've got my x and y plane um, and I want it 2 in the x direction and at the minute it says 4 but we want it 2 on the y direction as well so it's going to occur twice that way and twice that way and that first one always accounts for that okay and then obviously that second one that that number 2 number 2 will be made for us as well so at the minute, it's going to repeat on that corner, which it already exists on, that corner, which will make this one, this corner, which will make this one, and finally this corner, which will make this one. So if we close this sketch, it will repeat that feature into these four. I hope I haven't confused you too much with that. Okay, so as you can see, that feature has now been copied four times really easily, really, really nicely. And we're just going to finish that. So there we have it. That's effectively like a, a like a very very simple wine cooler. We can go ahead and do some more rounding of edges and stuff like that. Um, you know, to make it look a little bit nicer. Um, we're probably going to be using this in the assembly. We're going to put a strap on it. We're going to put some bolts in it to keep the strap on. Um, uh, but uh, um, this is basically just what we're going to be. You know, this this could easily just be like a wine holder so that wine bottles don't fall over very easily, and it works quite nicely. Um, one other thing that we're going to do is we're just going to increase this base area a little bit. Um, we could do that by going back and changing the protrusion. But I want a flat base um, around it. So um, we want a, a thin flat base that goes uh, at the bottom of this. So the way that we're going to achieve that is we're just going to go into the extrude command. And you'll see what I mean in just a sec. We're going to the extrude command. Uh, select this bottom plane. Uh, select a um, square by center, and as I said, because uh, because we set this coordinate axis to be our center, we can uh, we can just go ahead and use that. Now, obviously, our shape is uh, 240 by 240, so we're going to make this. Uh, we'll just say 280 by 280, so that's four centimeters on either side. Oh. Okay, so uh, that's just a little bit of a white paint to to help it um, not tip over so easily. And we'll make it, well, we've been using 5mm the whole time, so we'll make 5mm thick. So it's quite thin, it doesn't, uh, doesn't protrude too much. So this is quite handy, because um, now our wine bottle uh, holder isn't going to fall over. And the last thing I promised that we'd do in this video is a, um, is a rib. Um, and I'll only do the one, but 
again using the patterns or using the mirror techniques you can work out how to do the other four um, uh, later on if you if you choose to so the way that we're going to achieve a rib um, and a rib is basically just um, if you if you take uh, um, at the minute this this is very flimsy this could easily fall off or break off but a rib is a piece of plastic or a piece of metal or whatever the material is made of that goes um, in the ZX plane from the base of here up here and you'll, you'll see what I mean um, in industry it's called a rib so again in the thin wall um, area but not actually clicking on thin wall we want to click on the drop down arrow and you may have seen it earlier on just above web network which we've already used we're going to select rib and uh, the way it works is you have to select um, a plane that we want to use on now we want it to be in the very center of this line okay we want it to be a, a nice rib at the center of this line the way that we achieve that because we can't use a coincident plane because there isn't a plane that currently exists in the center line we're going to select the parallel plane and then we're going to set what sort of plane we want it on so we want it on a zx plane but not on the zx plane you see what i mean so we'll select this plane here because it's a good reference plane and it's going to be in line with this and now we need to move it back by some amount, I don't know if you can see that on top we need to move it back by some amount and we could set the distance, we know that it has to be uh, two, uh, one, sorry, 120 millimeters back uh, this way to make it perfectly in line but we want to double check, make 100% sure so we want to click it to something, we want to assign it so if I pulled it all the way back here I could sign it to the end point. Um, if I were to select this uh, radius, I could sign, assign it to the center point of this radius. Um, but if I go on to the key points here, just beside the plane, scroll down all the way down to midpoint, and then find that the midpoint of this line, it will click a point on the midpoint, and now it's set my plane to the midpoint. Okay, I'm just going to make a nice rib from up there to about halfway down here which is there and that's all you need to do for your rib it's very, it's very simple, just close that sketch um, again we need to set a thickness because obviously we don't know what thickness we want the rib so we're going to make it 5mm thick and then you point it inwards so it looks like this and now you've got a 5mm rib which just helps secure this plate on the bottom and what we're going to go ahead and do um, you know, what, you, what you can do is you can either do that uh, four times or three three more times to get used to it or you could just uh, mirror it using the mirror command that we, we saw in videos past um, so uh, so that, yeah that's that's the way that we're going to make this and we're going to use this feature again in the um, uh, we're going to use this feature again in the assembly in the next video um, I'm probably just going to go ahead and like, round some of these off to make it look a little bit neater, but we're going to use this general idea. Um, so I'll see you guys then.